Hi guys, Squall here, and welcome to a rather windy Duxford. I think we're blowing 20 knots with uh, at least 30 or 40 knot gusts, so it's it's quite sporty out there, as they say. And uh, yeah, you can see the sun is ducking behind the clouds and occasionally popping out, and in front of us is a rather beautiful Spitfire. This, in fact, is the Flying Iron Simulations recently released Supermarine Spitfire Mark IX. And in this video, we're going to have a first look at it. I'm going to take you through the startup procedure. We're going to take it for a, a blast up into the skies. We'll try and punch out through the clouds there. Maybe do a barrel roll, and then we'll try and land this thing. Like any other Spitfire, it's a tail dragger. It's a bit of a handful, particularly on takeoff. Landing isn't so bad, but takeoff can be a bit interesting with the uh, propeller torque and uh, just trying to keep the rudder in to, to keep it level. But, you know, it's a lot of fun to fly. This thing is not a study level aircraft. It's not, there are some th systems that aren't completely implemented either because they just haven't done them yet or because the SDK in Microsoft Flight Sim doesn't, doesn't allow them to. But what is here is a lot of fun and, you know, really enjoyable Microsoft Flight Sim. So we're gonna have a first look at it. So we're gonna go jump in the cockpit and I'll take you through the startup procedure. And here we are, we're in the cockpit of the Super Marine Spitfire Mark IX. A couple of things to point out. Firstly, this is the elliptical wing version. Uh, there is a clipped wing variant available, uh, that, which you get with the Spitfire, uh, which of course came later on during the Battle of Britain. A bit, little bit more maneuverable, but I personally love the elliptical wing version. Also, there's quite a few liveries that come with it, about six or seven, if I remember. This is the RR version, rather nice. As you can see, I mean, the texturing on this thing is just, like it's top draw. If you if you zoom right in, you get all the uh, sort of gritty iron plate, not scuffed kind of effects, visible. You know, not just in the cockpit, but also if we jump out again. If I take you underneath, you'll see inside the the wheel well there. You can see the dirt. So they really have you know pulled out all the stops here in terms of the visual candy. It is one of the best looking, best rendered. Uh, Spitfires that I think you can get pretty much in any sim. The one in DCS uh, is pretty good, but the, just the, the Microsoft Flight Sim PBR is just top draw, and they've really used texturing to, to great effect. So, in terms of the actual Spitfire cockpit itself, well, I don't know if you're familiar with it. I'll, I can kind of take you through some of the stuff here. I don't want to get dragged into all the details. We want to get through to startup so that you can. Uh, you can enjoy the sound of this thing, you know, during takeoff. But briefly, let's just run over the cockpits. Up here is the the oxygenation. This is the available oxygen supply. Uh, supply, supply, supply. Uh, this is the the feed to the actual uh, pilot. Down here is a, a clock. Here is the brake pressure. There's a supply along the top. Maybe if I jump down, it might be a bit better. Let me just get rid of the the yoke for a second. Uh, so down here is the actual supply, which is only partially modeled at the moment. And then here is the actual uh, pressure in the pipes, as it were. So if I press the parking brake, you can see it releases the brakes. Um, the, this supply is supposed to go down as you use flaps and brakes. Uh, there's only a limited available amount of air pressure in the real Spitfire. Um, but like I say, it's only partially modeled in this. Uh, this is the elevator trim. So if we adjust the elevator trim, you can see here that gives you a visual representation of where it's at. Up here is the airspeed indicator in miles per hour. Yes, this is old old school Britain right now. Uh, it goes around the outside in miles per hour and then continues down the inside here. This is the this is the attitude indicator <laughs> for what it's worth. <laughs> that's the horizon. You'll have to pretend that this is you know a lighter shade of brown and that's blue. But such as it is, it's better than nothing. Uh, this is the climb descent rate in thousands of feet per minute. Uh, down here is the altitude or altimeter. If I press the B key, it will reset the barrow. Uh, airfield elevation Duckford's about 125-ish feet, so that's that's reasonably accurate. Uh, this is the um, the magnetic compass, and below here is the I think it's the, called a P12 compass. You're supposed to rotate this thing, and you know I've not played around with that too much, so we're just going to look at this really. This is our magnetic heading. Over here is the turn slip coordinator, which is kind of upside down compared to what we normally have now. Uh, the slip is up here. Normally you have the slip ball down the bottom and then the turn coordinator is up here. Uh, it's the other way around. This this is obviously what you need to pay attention to when you're doing coordinated flight. Up here is the engine RPM gauge. 
This is the engine boost. Think of it as the manifold intake pressure, the fuel dynamics coming in. So the more the more you push the throttle forward, the more boost you will have. Uh, there is a variable pitch on this, so we can control the RPM. In fact, we will control the RPM with the propeller control, which is here. It's called the air screw control on this, but this is the propeller RPM. This is the supercharger. Normally, you leave it in auto. You go to medium uh, under certain conditions, particularly if the engine's a bit broken. <laughs> but normally, you just leave it in the auto position. Uh, down here is the oil pressure, oil temperature, and the radiator temperature. And under normal circumstances, you would let it manage the temperature of the radiator. Uh, well, I can't remember where the button is now for the automatic radiator setting. It's normally on auto and what happens is it will open the flaps on the rads which are on the wing uh, and keep the engine cool as need be uh, down here is the um, fuel and this is where it gets interesting because first of all when they designed the Spitfire they had it so that you you have to push the button to take a reading uh, and that was done to um, reduce um, battery battery usage electrical usage basically so you have to push it to engage and it then takes a reading however it only shows you the bottom tank the there are two tanks on the spitfire and um this only reads the bottom one so what's a, what's supposed to happen in the spitfire is uh, it, it basically reads fuel from the from the bottom tank but it burns fuel from the top tank first so as you're flying along the fuel doesn't actually go down because it's burning from the top um in microsoft flight sim i believe it's center one which is the uh, bottom tank yeah there you go it's center one which is the bottom tank and because of the sdk they can't actually cross feed fuel from here to here so i think what in reality that means is we only have this tank available and this one doesn't burn out and flow into this tank because of sdk reasons over here is the fuel pressure warning light which you know we'll go through in a second we'll have to use the little wobble pump to to get rid of that and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. You've got your fuel lights down here, which are currently in op. And then this is the starter and coil boost, which we'll use in a second. Magnetos, which hang on, they're switched on at the moment because my honeycomb. There we go. My honeycomb is overriding the position of those. So I need to turn all that off to get that to the off position. And apart from that, that's the, that's the main cockpit up here. The radio controls, which are a little bit in op at the moment. If you want to use ATC, you still have to use the. Um, uh, the menu you can't actually use these buttons i don't think in the current version and then on the left um standard stuff really you've got uh, your throttle lever and as you can see that come the green light comes on when you th push the throttle forward um then you've got the prop lever or the air screw as it calls it and then the mixture levers over here elevator trim wheel is here and that affects the elevator trim setting there as you can see uh, the manual actually recommends a bar of nosed down, I think, on takeoff. Personally, I found it nicer to leave it in a le in a level setting. It seems to work better for me. Down here is the rudder trim, um, which there doesn't appear to be a reading for uh, in the Spitfire, but, you know, it's there anyway. Uh, in cruise flight, you'd probably use that just to compensate slightly. Um, and then over here, there's some stuff that some of it's implemented some of it isn't this is the gear up obviously that's implemented the gear lever and then there's a de-icer which i've not actually tried yet and then this stuff here is to do with oxygen and um what's that oxygen oh yes that's the emergency gear down so if you can't if the gear won't go down there's actually on the spitfire this emergency lever that you pull and it punches a pressurized canister that forces the gear down um, don't know if that's actually operational. I've not tried it, but this this here, which is the oxygen mix from the main tanks, this is in op at the moment. Uh, so there's some stuff over there, and then there's some sneaky stuff that you need to be aware of that is down right down here. Uh, this one here, there's the. Um, can I actually move the camera down a little bit more? No. This this one here is the actual fuel pump, and it's actually a switch underneath which we need to turn on. Uh, when we're flying, we need to have the fuel pump turned on, the pitot heat that will turn on, and then this is oh, that's where the radio flap was. Now I remember. Now I remember. This is the um, the automatic or manual. If you want to open the radiator flap or just leave it in auto uh, to cool the engine, this stuff is in up down here, and that. Oh yes, and the fuel shut off valve is there. That is operational. And then if we just jump back up to the cockpit position, we can put the yoke back. 
The yoke levers do work, so as you pull the parking brake, the lever actually works. This is the uh, the gun, and that's an op in Microsoft Flight Sim, so don't be expecting to shoot things down. So that's the cockpit tour, as you like. Um, now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start the aircraft up. Okay, let's see if we can get this beauty started up, shall we? So um, there is a checklist that comes with the, the manual. Uh, we'll, we'll kind of briefly run through it, but it's something like this. So the gear indicator switch has to be forward. As you can see, the gear is down and locked. Then we need to put the propeller lever fully forward. We'll bring that back later. Uh, the mixture lever needs to come into idle cutoff, which is where it is. And the carb air filter, which is this lever here, which I didn't mention in the intro, I should have done. Uh, that needs to go forward when you're on the ground, you know, in, in non-tarmac areas. So the idea of that is to just stop all the, you know, dust and the stones and bits and pieces flying up and into the carb intake. Uh, so that goes forward pretty much when you're on the ground. And then when, you know, we're about to take off, you pull the lever back. Um, external fuel tank. Let's get this. External fuel tank is off. The fuel cutoff needs to come to on. We put the throttle forward about a half an inch, something like that. Uh, I don't know what that is in centimeters, by the way. Uh, the boost pump or the wobble pump is needs to be wobbled so that we extinguish, if I do this, so we can actually see the, the light here. Now, the trick to this, you can just physically hold it, but what I like to do is quickly tap the mouse like this. Because in reality, like the pilot can can wobble this thing very rapidly like that, but do a full swing of it. But that seems to um, to work nicely. Now the primer is we'll, we'll unlock it and prime. But in reality, at the moment, this is this doesn't really affect engine startup at the moment in the current version. Work in progress. You know, later on, I'm sure they'll add various things uh, to to improve the study level of this thing. But for now, that stays as it is. Uh, and also down here, the fuel tank pressure, this stays to off. You need to put this to on when you get above about 12,000 feet, otherwise the engine will cut out. So, uh, yeah, that stays off at the moment. Um, but, you know, later on, you, we, we may need it if we climb really high. Uh, then we want to do the, uh, the starter coil and boost covers come open like that. Now, in, in the real plane, you kind of have to press both. But what they've done is implemented a, 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 a hidden feature here. If you actually press in between, it will push those at the same time. Uh, so let's get the uh, mags turned to on. So the mags, mags are on, on. Uh, mixture is going to go to full forward. Mags are on both. This is where we, we shout clear prop, look around and make sure nobody else is here. And this thing should, should now fire up. Oh yeah, listen to that. Now from an external view, oh it's warming up nicely, you see, if you look down here, you can see now that the uh, engine temperature is rising, we've got good oil pressure, but the temp's coming up nicely. Uh, that needs to get, we need to be realistically in about the 60 mark, or 50 or 60 mark before we taxi, and, and ideally this would start to come up to about 60 as well. That's where we want to be for an, a fully warmed up engine. But you can see from the outside, the engine sounds quite different. Because you just hear the propeller noise mostly, but in the cockpit, you kind of hear a lot more. Now, what I want to do is click on the door because we can't close the canopy. You see the lovely animation there. We can't actually close the canopy unless we close the door first, so we need to get that closed now. That is the. Um, the starting checklist more or less complete. There's, there's not a lot to it. Um, in flight, there are some things that we will need to watch out for. Uh, so, for example, uh, the engine RPM. Con if you want continuous flight, um, the engine RPM, we need to keep at about 2650, which is about here. Uh, 2650 RPM with a boost of about seven and the Spitfire will cruise all the way until it runs out of fuel. So that's where you want to be just in, in normal flying. If you want to go for climbing, um, the max climb rate, which you can do for an hour, is 2850, which is up here. 2850 RPM and a plus 12 boost. So, obviously, when a pilot takes off and when they were going on sorties and that kind of thing, they want to climb up really high. They can do an hour's climb 2850 on 12 boost. 
and this thing will climb at thousands of feet per minute so it doesn't take long to get you know pretty high and in an emergency like take maximum takeoff in combat limit and this is only for like five minutes at a time short boost type stuff 3000 rpm and 18 on the boost but that is putting a lot of strain on the engine and it will start to get hot normal cruise uh, most efficient cruise uh, the manual says happens between about 170 and 200 miles per hour so this you know 180 85 anywhere here is is a nice fuel efficient cruise so if you're trying to do long distance stuff that's where you want to be now what we'll do in a second is we'll taxi over uh, the wind today uh, it's quite windy like i said but it's coming in at about two three zero degrees i think so we're going to take off from runway two four which is actually to our right so we're going to have to turn around and taxi over here for runway two four um, differential braking is an operation effectively what we do is we we bring our rpms up to about 1500 and uh, hold the right brake press the right rudder and we'll start to turn right you can't see a lot in a tail dragger like this in front of you so common practice is to like s taxi so that you can see where you're going want to miss that van um, but yeah let's get taxied over and uh, we'll line up for takeoff okay so i'm activated my track ir because it just makes life a lot easier we'll just very quickly do a control check so ailerons we can see the elevator maybe if i okay we'll just go external camera and do it there we go and rudder yeah all good so that's fine uh so what i want to do is park your brakes coming off i want to hold down the right toe brake and just bring forward the rpms a little bit The, the actual engine, um, when you throttle it up, there's quite a delay between, as you may have saw then, there's quite a delay between the power being generated and then suddenly the power comes in and it's the same when you back off as well. Uh, it takes a while for the power to get released, so it is something to bear in mind and that you'll see that when we come into land as well. You back off on the throttle and not a lot happens immediately. Push forward the throttle. Now, typical um, operation is to actually leave the canopy open during takeoff. <laughs> Interesting as that sounds. Uh, let's just pull up here a second. Uh, leave the canopy open during takeoff. Uh, once you get to about 160 miles an hour, that's when you bring the canopy open. Uh, close it usually. Same thing when we come into land. Actually, we'll we'll open the canopy below 160, drop the gear, and then we'll position ourselves to uh, to lower the flaps. Speaking of flaps, we'll just do a quick flap check. You can see the little uh, indicator here. Uh, if we actually switch to the camera, you can see the flaps. And not really flaps, they're like giant air brakes. The, the, the actual flap is about 80 degrees or 85 degrees. So what happens is it slows you down a lot. Um, it doesn't behave like a traditional flap in that sense. Let's jump back in, make sure the flaps come back up. Okay, so we want to just do a quick uh, check here. I want to get some lights on, so I'm going to put the... Uh, Landing lights on, the strobes. Um, we'll put the nav on anyway. We probably don't need the nav, but there's little tiny nav lights out on the wing there, uh, which you'll see later. Uh, elevator trim, so we want to make sure that we're neutral or slightly down a bar, according to the manual. Uh, rudder trim, you want to make sure that's in zero, so you don't have any sort of adverse rudder that you're not expecting. Uh, your prop control lever needs to be fully forward. Mixture is fully forward. Uh, the fuel poop fuel boost pump needs to come on and that's the one that's like awkwardly right down here let's see if i can get it this way there you go so that needs to go to on pito will turn on as well if it let us hang on the pito is driven by my there we go it was being overridden by my bravo quadrants we'll leave the rads on automatic so yeah, make sure you get that fuel boost pump on. It's hidden, it's easy to forget, but it is in the checklist. Uh, so that's in up, that's in auto. Now we're gonna close the carb filter and we're gonna taxi and we're gonna try and take off. 
this can be a bit sporty and a bit interesting, but let me just double check the windsock. Yep, the windsock's blowing in the right direction. Don't try and take off in a tailwind in this thing. It is a, it's hard enough to do without a tailwind, trust me. You want a nice strong headwind. Approach is looking clear. Now, you need to be quite gentle with the boost when you come in. Um, I, I like to bring it up to about three or four boost on that red boost pressure indicator down here. Um, let the speed build up so that you get some rudder control. Because this thing will try and pull to the left quite a lot. It's a bit of a nightmare like that. So just gently bring the speed up and then just pull it, pull it off the ground nice and gently. I have a little bit of back pressure actually on my... Let's put the stick back by the way. I like a little bit of back pressure. Um, you want to get off the ground nice and smoothly, and hopefully this thing won't tip over or pull us to the left. Okay, let's, uh, let's go for it. Get ready to put in some right rudder, though, because this thing will pull. Okay, just leave it there and let the speed build up now. Okay. More boost. Air speed's building nicely. Put back on the stick. Come on. There you go. Okay, we have a positive rate. We'll bring the gear up now. And up it comes. Okay, let's get the canopy closed so I can hear myself. There we go. And we are airborne. So what I want to do now is just uh, back off on the RPMs. So pull the prop lever back. Get it to about 2650. And now we can enjoy the wonderful, wonderful British countryside in probably one of the best planes this country's ever made. Just keep the nose up. That was like nice, nice steady 1,000 feet per minute then. Climb, we'll just bank over, make sure we're coordinated on the turn. Remember the slip ball down there. We'll turn around and just fly back over Duxford. And then we'll take her up for a little climb. You see the details on the cockpit, the cockpit glass? Absolute superb amount of detail inside this cockpit. It really is a lot of fun to fly this thing. So as you can see, even on boost 4 right now, we're doing over 200 miles an hour, well over 200. We can actually just back off a little bit and, and have a look at Duxford as we fly over it. Absolutely superb, look at that. You'd almost think I was part of the acrobatic display team. <laughs> right, there's not, there's, there are some fluffies around. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll try the, uh, we'll, we'll move the RPMs up to 2850. Put the boost up to 12, which is our max climb. And we'll pull the nose back. Max climb speed at this altitude um, is about 160, 150 miles per hour. So we can basically pull back the throttle now and climb like it's going out of fashion. This is a high performance machine. nose down as the speed's coming up to 160. So there you go. We are now trimmed out in a, in a nice stable climb. 160 miles per hour. And we're climbing at, what, two and a half, three thousand 3,000 feet a minute. And it can climb like this for an hour. According to the manual. Oh, bit of stutter there.
Let's maybe go into an external view for a second. Have a good look at this. The trouble is when I'm in drone camera I can't actually control the plane. Which is uh, somewhat annoying. There you go. Beautiful. What a beautiful plane. There you go, we are pretty much now up in these clouds, and that didn't take a long time at all, did it? So while we're up here, let's uh, let's try and do a stall and see what happens, shall we? So we'll bring the RPMs back to 2650, which is our normal cruise setting. And we'll keep the throttle all the way back. And we'll just keep the nose in a small climb. Now the stall speed for this thing should be around about 80 miles per hour with no flaps. Speed's coming down, 130. So the engine temperature's looking good, radiator temperature's good, all pressure's good. Now we'll just hold it in this level flight. Just wait for it to stall. Pretty much having to pull back on the stick quite a lot now. We're approaching 80. It should stall pretty soon. I don't think it has a stall warning on the Spitfire. Like a stall horn. I can't remember if it has one or not. Okay, I'm losing control of the elevator now. I'm like losing authority. And it's pulling away. I can't do anything about it. It's falling away to the left. And it sends us into a spiral. Nice. Okay. That was a pretty good stall, actually. That was uh, pretty bang on. It, it fell away to the left, and then I got recovery, got control back fairly quickly. So, yeah, quite impressive. So, some of the things that aren't modeled according to the manual, um, let's talk about some of those things. The magneto sounds are not in there yet. The primer is only partially supported, as I mentioned earlier. I uh, should have put those covers back, by the way. Uh, the oxygen system's not fully implemented. Uh, the fuel tank is the is the main one. You know, it's probably not as high fidelity study level as some of the other stuff. Like, uh, I think, you know, DCS's flight model is fantastic in the Spitfire. Um, the the A to A version of this is very detailed on its system side. In terms of a package. This thing is a whole lot of fun. Uh, there's plenty of support here. I think you could easily go and take this out, maybe with some friends fly online and just have an absolute hoot. You could you could buzz around some pretty cool play. Oh, that looks like Stansted. I mean, Duxford's not far from Stansted, but that looks a lot like Stansted to me. Anyway, so let's um, let's bring the power back up. We'll just do a couple of manoeuvres there. Let's try an aileron roll. Pretty good. Let's uh, see if we can do a loop. I would like some of the engine audio tweaks. It does feel a little bit like it doesn't change enough for me. The engine, you know, the engine working, uh, I think the change in audio is not there. So that's one thing I'd like to see worked on a bit. But what is what is here is pretty good. Maybe we should go and land at Stansted. <laughs> I'd be a bit of a surprise for them. I'll just go back and try and find Duxford again. I don't know. There's something about the Spitfire that's just so magical. I love this aircraft. 
There's just nothing else like it. That Merlin engine, fantastic. So yeah, let's uh, let's take it back and see if we can land this thing. That's the next tricky bit. And um, we'll get on the ground and we'll give you my final thoughts. So here we are. I, uh, I managed to find Duxford. <laughs> it's amazing in the Spitfire how close Duxford and Stansted... Uh, Stansted? Yeah, Stansted. How close Duxford and Stansted really are. Like, it was shocking. I, I was over there. Stansted's like in that direction. And I just was over here in a matter of minutes. Anyway, so what we'll do is I'll just quickly overfly the airfield. So we need to land on runway 24, <clears throat> which if you look at the magnetic compass here, that's the direction we're currently on. Duxford is off our This is a completely non-standard approach, by the way. Um, so we want to be about... So 1,000 feet above would be about 1,200 feet at Duxford. So what we'll do is we'll start turning and uh, descend a little bit. And once we get our speed under 160, that's when we'll uh, open the canopy and drop the gear. So let's get that altitude down initially. We'll level off and get the speed down. That's 2,000 feet. Now, you don't want to be too low on the approach in this thing um, because you won't be able to see over the nose properly. That's the thing to watch out for. There we go, that's not so bad. It's about 1,500 feet. Speed's coming back now. Once the speed's under 1,600, we'll pop the uh, gear down, canopy open. There we go, that's good. Right, 160. It's gonna get noisy. Gear's now coming down. That's gonna create some drag. Now we're aiming to get about 100 miles an hour on the approach and then we want to be touching down about 80, something like that. But once we once we drop those flaps, it really will. It really will slow down. They're, they're unbelievable. Right, I don't want to lose any more altitude now. Otherwise we'll lose visibility on the approach, so... Let's get the flaps down now. There they go. Indicated. Speed's coming right down to so get a bit of throttle back in. Don't want to get it below 100 miles an hour. This is definitely a long approach. You could do this a lot shorter, but to make sure that we get it correct. Give myself more time, don't want to be rushed. I've only done this a few times. <laughs> it's uh, it's tricky. Alright, there's 100 mile an hour, 1,000 foot. Let's back off on the throttle a little bit. I think it's about the throttle, like I said, it's a bit like, uh, it's a bit like flying jets in the you adjust the throttle, but not a lot happens. It's not like an immediate effect. And that's something that you've got to watch out for. So once we get to the threshold, as soon as we get to the threshold, we want to just back off on the throttle completely, let it glide down to about 80, and then we want to be looking to touch down on three wheels if possible, and then just let it basically settle down. Once we get under 50 miles an hour, we can um, pull back on the stick to give us more control on the back. Uh, otherwise, the uh, the back might come back up again. But we can't do it too early, of course, because it will want to take off. So now you can see the problem is the visibility. It is a tricky one, this. Like, it's, like I say, it's, it's pretty hard to take off and it's not easy to land. It's a bit of a challenge for all these reasons. The, the nose cone is just one of those reasons. Just got to watch that airspeed all the time. Just playing with the throttle, making sure we don't get too low on the speed. Okay, we're 
coming over the threshold now. So I'm just going to drop the throttle now. And then let it more or less just glide in. Rest that vertical descent rate. Not too much. And then this is where you can see the dance I'm having to do now. So I get lightly on the brakes. There we go. Alright, we'll just backtrack, I think. So I'm going to get the flaps up now because I don't want the wind catching those things. I'll just backtrack and uh, go and park up. Whew! So yeah, that's a, a bit of fun. It's a lot, lot easier in a headwind. Um, when the wind is calm, it's actually harder to land because you come in at more of a speed. And uh, with the Spitfire, when you're taking off and landing, you've got to be very gentle just getting rid of the speed. Any sudden movements, any sudden throttle, any sudden aileron, like it will just, yeah, you lose it quickly. I, I had some rather sporty takeoffs, <laughs> put it that way. <laughs> That's kicked over to a crosswind now, look at that, wow. Okay, strobe light can come off. And that's the other thing, you've got to be gentle with the taxi as well. Everything's everything's a bit of a dance with this thing. You, you've got to dance on the rudder pedals, dance with the throttle a little bit. But it is a lot of fun to fly. And, um, you know, Duxford, Biggin Hill. I actually found... There's a, there's a free... This is freeware scenery, this one, by the way. This Duxford one. If you Google for this, any Microsoft Flight Sim add-on site, you can get this Duxford. It's not a complete representation, but it's pretty darn close, and it's completely free. Uh, EGSU is what you're looking for. Echo Golf Sierra U Uniform. Uh, that's Duxford. And it's quite a nice place to fly in and out of. If you ever get a chance, come here. When they have these Battle of Britain flights on, they are just fantastic. Um, obviously, not in COVID times, but normally you can come here and see an air display and it is a, a really good day out. And they've got a fantastic museum, they've even got tanks here as well. Whee! Careful on the brakes. <laughs> right, parking brake is on, so we want to just drop the mixture. Close the fuel shot off valve. Magnetos to off. Everything is now off. And that, as I say, is that. Now that buzzing sound um, that you that you still have, that's something I think they're going to fix. It's a little bit of a bug where the buzzing sound um, just stays on until you turn the battery on and off again. It's a bit of a weird one. I had to put the battery on and then back off to uh, to get that to stop. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. Um, but there you go. So yeah, that is the Spitfire. Supermarine Spitfire from Flying Iron Simulations. Um, this is the version 9. There is a clip wing that comes with it and various liveries. Definitely worth taking a look at, guys. It's a lot of fun. It's, uh, like I say, it's not quite study level. Don't expect everything to be implemented, but... What's implemented works pretty well and uh, certainly doesn't stop you having a lot of fun. If you want to actually shoot things, then you're going to have to go over to DCS because Microsoft Flight Sim is not a combat sim and I don't think ever will be. Uh, so just bear that in mind. You can't actually go blowing things up. But in terms of an aircraft that's very capable, uh, looks amazing, sounds fantastic, and it's just a joy to, to hoon around, um, yeah, put it on your list of things to look at. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. That's it from me. Take care. Happy flying.